Hi, I'm Lone Candle. War. From November 2020 to November 2022, a conflict raged, potentially killing a million people. While the world's attention has been rightfully focused on the war in Ukraine, that invasion only resulted in up to 100,000 deaths as of April 2023. While atrocities have been committed in Ukraine, they pale in comparison to the rape and civilian slaughter of the war in Ethiopia, where the federal government of the country, regional militias, neighboring Eritrea, and fighters from Somalia have been attacking one region and ethnicity of Ethiopia, Tigray. How did such a bloody war start? Why are multiple forces teaming up on one Ethiopian ethnicity? And what were the ebbs and flows of the conflict? Let's delve into it. Menelik II created modern Ethiopia by conquering a variety of ethnic groups, including Tigray, and making Addis Ababa the capital. He was emperor of Ethiopia from 1889 to 1913. Haile Selassie ruled Ethiopia as emperor from 1930 to 1974. He gave western Tigray to Amara, which was previously controlled by the Tigrayans. The Tigrayans revolted, but this revolt was put down and civilians were massacred. In 1974, the Derg overthrew him. They were a violent, Soviet-backed junta. In 1991, the authoritarian Derg was overthrown by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front after a 15-year war. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, led a coalition that then ruled the country from 1991 to 2018. They emphasized regional autonomy. A new constitution in 1994 made Ethiopia a federal republic with regional states based on ethnicity. This ethnic federalism resulted in each region being majority controlled by a particular ethnicity. This led to discrimination against minorities and violent conflicts. While the president is head of state, the prime minister holds most of the power. The federal government is supposed to be in charge of defense, while the states only have police forces. But multiple regions created heavily armed special forces. These have taken part in violent attacks. Eritrea was a part of Ethiopia, but after a long war for independence from 1961 to 1991, it broke away. In 1991, Tigrayans fought alongside Eritreans and captured the Ethiopian capital together. The Tigrayan-led government fought a border war with Eritrea where 80,000 people died. They eventually made peace and an international commission ruled where the border was, but Ethiopia did not accept it. Over the decades, the TPLF became more authoritarian. In 2018, in response to three years of mass protests, the Prime Minister stepped down. Amara and Oromo parties got Abiy Ahmed appointed Prime Minister. This ended Tigrayan rule. Abiy promised peace and ethnic harmony. A large coalition ruling party was formed, the Prosperity Party. Three of the four parties in the previous ruling coalition merged into the Prosperity Party, as well as regional parties previously not in power. The TPLF refused to join the new ruling party, seeing it as a plan to make the state more unitary rather than federal. They were sidelined in the government, and many considered anti-corruption prosecutions as excessively targeting Tigrayans. Abbey resolved a two-decade-long territorial disagreement with Eritrea. He did this by ceding territory which Tigrayans considered theirs. He also gave amnesty to rebel groups and freed political prisoners. The ending of the border disagreement and the loosening of freedom restrictions on Ethiopians won him the Nobel Peace Prize. He began centralizing the government away from the country's ethnic federalism. Abiy initially expanded political rights and civil liberties, but later, restrictions were added. People were arrested arbitrarily, and opposition party members and journalists were harassed. Some accused Abiy of moving in an authoritarian direction. His next move, postponing elections, certainly continued down the authoritarian path. In 2020, the government chose to postpone all elections due to the COVID pandemic. This extended the prime minister's power and canceled 
August 2020 elections until the pandemic's end. In September 2020, Tigray organized a regional election anyways, where the TPLF won heavily in the regional parliament. The federal government did not accept the legitimacy of those elections because all elections were postponed. The government cut funding to Tigray. The government publicly said that the Tigrayan government was illegitimate because those elections were banned. And Tigray said Abby was illegitimate because he was extending his term in office without elections. By the end of October, Tigray was rejecting the federal government's appointments for Northern Command because Tigray would not recognize decisions by the federal government. Ethiopia, a landlocked country located in East Africa, is Africa's second most populous country with 120 million people. Over 90 languages are spoken, with the top six being Oromo, Amharic, Somali, Tigrina, Sadama, Olada, Sabet Bet Garaj, and Afar. A majority of Ethiopians are Christian, with 43% of all Ethiopians being Orthodox, 19% being Protestant, and 34% being Muslim. There are over 80 ethnolinguistic communities in Ethiopia. The country's sub-governments are based on ethnicity, giving the majority ethnic group a level of autonomy in their ethnic unit. Ethiopia is split into 11 administrative regions and 30 sub-regional administrative units. Minorities within these states and units are often discriminated against. The Amara were the most influential group during the Imperial and Derg periods. Their culture was dominant and they identified more as Ethiopians than Amara. They did this more so than other ethnicities. In the 1970s and 80s, there was no Amara insurgency. All other major ethnic groups had one. The Ethiopian versus Amara identity of the Amara has changed recently as Amara nationalism has grown. The Amara are 27% of the Ethiopian population. While the Oromo are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia at 34% of the population, they have not historically been in power like the Amara. They have been agitating for self-rule and influence. Afar is close to 2% of Ethiopia's population. Tigray is a region of 6 or 7 million people, making them 6% of the Ethiopian population and the fourth largest ethnic group. They led the government ruling coalition from 1991 to 2018. Addis Ababa, located in the center of the country, is the capital of Ethiopia. Eritrea is Ethiopia's northern neighbor. It is an impoverished nation of about 3.5 million, but its leader likes to influence his neighbors and intervene. He resents the TPLF for not following the Boundary Commission's border ruling and was happy to weaken a border rival when given the opportunity. The war's start is controversial. According to the Ethiopian government, an untrustworthy source, the Tigrayans attacked a military headquarters in the Tigrayan capital of Mekel. That action sparked the war and justified the federal government and Eritrea invading Tigray. But, why were the forces of Eritrea and Ethiopia so ready for a large-scale invasion? Why was the Ethiopian leadership spewing hateful rhetoric that treated the Tigrayans like subhumans, seemingly to prepare the country for the need to kill Tigrayans? According to Martin Plout and Sarah Vaughan, who study the region and have written a book on the conflict, the real story behind the military base attack was planes sent with federal special forces to capture Tigrayan leaders. This was the act of war that sparked the conflict. Tigrayans didn't accept this attack and attacked the military base. Then Ethiopia and Eritrea invaded like they already had planned to. Tigrayans argued that the invasion was already planned and troops were in place, and that therefore the attack on the base didn't cause the war, but was preemptive. The International Crisis Group says that the federal government was already prepared for intervention, with movements of federal troops days before the base attack, and Sudanese officials reported discussing the future conflict with Abiy a week before it began. They said Abiy asked them to secure the border. The invasion also appeared to be pre-planned with Eritrea. 
Why would the leader of Ethiopia want to attack Tigray? He wanted to centralize power and saw Tigray as a barrier to that. Tigray had led the country for 27 years, and they could be a threat to his power if they opposed him. They already refused to join his winning coalition and defied his delaying of elections by holding their own. Tigray even said that Abiy was illegitimate for extending his term without an election. Abiy had a campaign of anti-Tigrayan hate speech saying that they are monsters and should be the last of their kind. Such sentiment was disseminated by satellite TV. Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia had signed a tripartite security agreement in September 2018. Later, and nine months before the war started, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia had a tripartite agreement meeting where they may have discussed and planned the war. A few bilateral meetings were also likely used for such planning. Weapons and troops were moved into place before the invasion had begun. Ethiopian and Eritrean forces were already at the borders. Eritrea conscripted young people through its national service system. Ethiopian elite units were in Eritrea in preparation for their joint invasion of Tigray. Right when the war began, more Ethiopian troops were flown into Eritrea to attack with the Eritreans from the north. Video from November 5th has shown the Ethiopian army handing over lots of military equipment to Eritrean troops. There were also irregular flights into the Eritrean capital and cities near the Ethiopian border, likely delivering weapons. According to former Eritrean Defense Minister Mesfin Hagos, before the conflict, elite Ethiopian units were in Eritrea as part of a plan to strike out of existence the TPLF. Months before fighting began, Troops were in place, and Abiy and his advisors had already discussed the invasion. Advisors and officials who disagreed had to leave. According to former senior official Gabriel Maskell, in a mid-October video conference, Abiy told party officials that he would militarily intervene in Tigray. Whatever really happened on the military base, the Tigrayans took it over on the night of November 3rd, and on November 4th, 2020, Abiy announced a military offensive whereby Tigray was invaded by federal, Eritrean, and Amara forces. The federal government declared a state of emergency and limited Tigray's electricity, banking services, and telephone and internet communications. Tigray regional forces and militia joined with Tigrayans from the federal army and took heavy weapons from federal forces stationed in Tigray. The government used airstrikes and a multi-front invasion to quickly push into Tigray and take the Tigrayan capital. Invading forces consisted of Ethiopian federal forces, Eritrean forces, Somali soldiers, and Amara militia. Afar militias also assisted federal troops. From the north, Eritreans attacked with Ethiopian soldiers. From the south, the Ethiopian army invaded. And in the first few months, Amara attacked from the southwest, taking western Tigray. Amara claims the territory as rightfully theirs. The taking of western Tigray cut supply lines to Sudan. Artillery fire and airstrikes hit Tigray, who fired back with rockets it took from military bases. Rocket targets included the Eritrean capital and airports in Amara. The Tigrayan capital, Mekel, fell on November 29, 2020. All three invasions committed atrocities against civilians, ranging from murder, destruction of property, looting, rape, and ethnic cleansing. Initially, Abiy described the attack as an operation targeted at individuals in TPLF leadership. The communication blackout made it difficult for the outside world to assess the conflict. Abiy refused offers of mediation from the African Union. With the successful invasion, the federal government declared victory. Tigrayans responded with a guerrilla war, killing many invaders and targeting supply lines. Abiy refused peace talks and claimed that there were no Eritrean forces in Tigray. He later said Eritreans were just securing the border. But Eritreans operated past the border. Shortly after the war started, Eritreans took territory that they have claimed from Tigray and Ethiopia. The Eritrean president may be determined to destroy or hurt as much as possible the Tigrayans, who have been enemies for decades. Within Eritrea, the government hunted draft dodgers. The Ethiopian Air Force Command 
moved to Eritrea's capital because that is closer to Tigray than their normal base. In June 2021, the Tigrayans launched an offensive that took the regional capital. Before two weeks went by, federal forces pulled out of Tigray. The federal government declared a temporary ceasefire and said the enemy was a terrorist group. They said the ceasefire was to allow the people of Tigray to reflect on whether they should collude with terrorists. The federal government took heavy losses in June, so the declared ceasefire was likely an attempt to recoup. Tigray forces ignored the declared ceasefire, noting that there were still Amaran forces in western Tigray. Eritreans may have briefly withdrawn, but were back by August. Tigray demanded that the government lift the blockade and discuss a political solution. In July, the government reinforced the Tigrayan Afar border with regional forces. In July, Abiy won national parliamentary elections in a landslide, giving him a second five-year term. The TPLF boycotted the election. Abiy's opposition in Parliament said the government banned poll observers in some states. The U.S. State Department had concerns about the detention of political opponents and media harassment. Later that summer, Abiy made a call for all capable citizens to join the fight. A majority of Tigrayans are farmers. Many fled or were killed or lost their material and livestock or were prevented from farming in some other way. This, as well as a blockade stopping food from coming in, led to a food crisis. Among children under five living in Tigray, one in three had acute malnutrition. Over a million of them missed education, and more than 9,000 were recorded to not have caregivers or parents. Infrastructure like hospitals and schools was damaged. Many Tigrayans died due to lack of supplies and food, and the conflict exacerbated problems caused by the country's drought. Attempts to send food aid to Tigray were blocked by Ethiopian or Eritrean forces. It was too dangerous for aid workers to deliver food. We know of 24 of them killed. In 2021, the UN estimated that 5.2 million Tigrayans, about 90% of the region's population, needed emergency food aid. Expert estimates concluded that up to 900,000 people were in famine conditions. Other estimates put 400,000 as suffering from famine effects and 1.8 million on the edge. Ethiopian officials denied the existence of a famine and that aid was being blocked. The Tigrayans, starving, decided they had to force the government to allow aid and trade back in. So, in August 2021, marched on the Ethiopian capital. Their forces bulged south into Amara toward the capital. They joined with certain Oromo allies and in November 2021 reached within 85 miles of the capital, but were stopped by a few different factors. One, a mass recruitment from Ethiopia whereby Abiy called on all civilians from all regions to join the fight and dramatically said he would join the forces on the front line. Regional fighters from Oromia, Sadama, Somalia, and Southern Peoples were mobilized to fight Tigray. The regions asked for civilians to arm themselves. Two, drones purchased from Turkey, the Emirates, and Iran targeted transport links. Three, stretched supply lines. Facing an enemy with mass recruits, drone air power bearing down on them, and stretched supply lines, the Tigrayans had no choice but to retreat, falling back into Tigray by November or December 2021. At some point, Tigrayan forces went into western Tigray and did much damage to Ethiopian and Amara forces there, as well as committing atrocities against civilians. In retaliation for military losses, Amara militia murdered Tigrayan civilians. The Tigrayans did not retake western Tigray and had to retreat from the territory. Tigrayans also attacked into Afar. In the back half of 2021, many civilians were killed there. While the Tigrayans marched south, they killed civilians. Although only the Ethiopians and Eritreans can be claimed to have tried to wipe out or suppress an ethnic group, all sides committed great crimes against humanity. The federal government imprisoned at least a thousand people across the country, most of them Tigrayans. It also discouraged foreign interference in investigations. All sides were accused of forcing civilians to fight and using human wave tactics. After only being trained for a few weeks, masses of people were sent toward the enemy, exposed to their weaponry. Defenders killed many, 
but the waves kept coming until the defenders were overrun and ground was gained. Needless to say, this resulted in high casualties. It's not clear if the Tigrayans used human wave attacks. By January 2022, more than a third of Tigrayans had an extreme lack of food. In March 2022, Tigrayans agreed to a cessation of hostilities, but wanted an end to the blockade before starting formal peace talks. Some aid entered the territory, but much of the blockade was still in place and basic services were not turned back on. Omara was still in control of western Tigray and Eritrea was still in the north, thus Tigray couldn't create a supply line to Sudan. On August 17th, the federal government proposed a formal ceasefire agreement, but on August 24th, conflict resumed, starting in the Omara region, then spreading. It's not clear who caused the resumption of conflict, but federal and Eritrean forces were ready. Ethiopia and Eritrea launched an invasion on September 1st. Aid was fully cut off again. The invasion resulted in incredibly high casualties. By September 11th, the Tigrayans said they wanted peace talks. Tigrayan defenses held at first, but in October, key lines were broken through. The federal government and Eritrea captured important cities. With no hope of winning, their people starving, and renewed invasions taking Tigrayan cities, the Tigrayans sued for peace, lowering conditions for peace talks. Before, the Tigrayans had refused formal talks as long as the blockade was in place, and had said that the African Union was biased in favor of Abbey. But, with total defeat looming, Tigray dropped those demands. In 2020 and 2021, it was the federal government who did not want to talk, saying that the invasion was an internal law enforcement matter, so there was no need for talks. On October 25, 2022, peace talks led by the African Union began in Pretoria, South Africa. On November 2nd, an agreement on the permanent cessation of hostilities was made. The peace between the TPLF and the Ethiopian government included an end of hostilities, disengagement of forces, an end to hostile propaganda, the disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration of the TPLF forces, civilian protections and humanitarian access, a return to constitutional order, federal forces and institutions re-entering the Tigrayan capital of Mikel, a voiding of the Tigrayan elections, and the TPLF and federal government to appoint an inclusive interim administration for Tigray until new elections. The federal government promised to end the offensive, restore services, and allow aid. The giving up of heavy weapons was supposed to be done concurrently with the withdrawal of foreign forces, mostly meaning Eritrean. However, the Eritreans did not leave immediately, and even continued committing atrocities. Amara forces also still occupied western Tigray. On November 12, 2022, in Nairobi, military commanders from the government and the TPLF made a follow-up agreement that slowed the disarmament plan and split it into two phases, as well as tying it to the withdrawal of non-federal forces. The Tigrayans would give up heavy weapons first, then later, small arms. In January 2023, the African Union began overseeing the Tigrayans giving up heavy weapons to the federal government. Eritrean and Amara leaders were not involved in the peace negotiations, and fighters from these two entities did not immediately leave Tigray. After the fighting stopped, reports of abuses by Eritreans and Amara continued. In follow-up talks, Tigray received a pledge that Eritrean forces would withdraw. As of March 2023, the blockade on Tigray was not yet lifted. Roads into Tigray were still closed, and Omara and Eritrean forces within Tigray made aid delivery difficult. According to the UN, only 16% of food response beneficiaries could be reached, compared to 80% in Omara and 98% in Afar. In March, Eritrean soldiers still attacked civilians and stole their stuff. The Amara expelled many Tigrayan farmers who had lived in western Tigray for generations, and the Amara continued to occupy the territory. Amaro may not be willing to give up the region of western Tigray that they took during the war. As of the beginning of May 2023, it appears that Amara and Eritrean forces still occupy parts of what was Tigrayan territory at the start of the war. Despite appearing to be nearing total victory, the government chose to instead end the dispute with peace talks, 
government forces were making massive gains with no sign of slowing. However, Ethiopia's economy was hurting by the expenses and destruction of the war, as well as a horrible drought. Also, a complete occupation of Tigray would likely mean guerrilla war, further reliance on Eritrea, and using up forces that could be used to quell other violence. So, although the federal government had the leverage, they also had incentives to go ahead and end the war with talks, rather than a complete invasion and guerrilla war. Due to media blackouts, it is difficult to know how many people died as a result of the war. Additionally, Ethiopia has resisted investigations of the war by foreign and supranational bodies. An August 2022 estimate by Professor Jan Nyssen at Ghent University said that 600,000 civilians may have died in the conflict. With 31,300 to 89,300 civilians being killed or massacred, 228,000 to 356,100 dying due to famine, and 124,000 to 155,000 dying due to lack of medical attention. Dr. Tony Magana had the number of Tigrayan famine deaths at 125,000. Dr. Fasika Amdeslas saw a great increase in maternal mortality rates. Battlefield death counts range from 80,000 to 600,000. The high estimates of battlefield and civilian death counts put the total high estimate at 1.2 million deaths. Much in the Tigray region has been devastated. Some places were raped and looted by Amara just for the Amara to leave and then the Eritreans to loot and rape. Sometimes, when the looters couldn't take things with them, they would just destroy them, leaving livestock to bleed to death. Fighters damaged or destroyed water supply lines, irrigation schemes, and facilities. Tigray is a region with water difficulties, so damaging such infrastructure hurts. Half of Tigray's water supply schemes were destroyed. After the war, parts of Tigray still didn't have access to water. The blockade caused a shortage of water treatment chemicals, so waterborne diseases have ailed Tigrayans. Also, internal displacements increased the water need in different locations. Millions of people were displaced internally or to adjacent countries. Afar and Amara also had areas greatly damaged. Eritrea hurt due to their president conscripting people and throwing them over the border. The war caused lots of destruction in Tigray. It will take time to rebuild. As of March 2023, humanitarian groups still couldn't reach all parts of Tigray due to violence. Teachers, doctors, and nurses had not been paid in two and a half years. At the same time as the Tigray War, other intercommunal and inter-ethnic conflicts within Ethiopia killed and displaced people, and tensions with Sudan boil over into violence. The government has been fighting armed groups in Oromia. In August 2021, the Oromo Liberation Army, OLA, announced an alliance with the Tigray People's Liberation Front. The OLA split off from a different Oromo group that made peace with the government in 2018. Both the OLA and TPLF prefer ethno-regional self-determination and are concerned about too much centralization. Government forces have used mass detentions and extrajudicial killings and have launched airstrikes against the Oromo insurgency, killing dozens of civilians. The Oromo conflict has continued past the end of the Tigrayan War. Discussions that may end this conflict began in late April 2023. The Sudan border around the Amara region has been in dispute for decades. In 2009, Ethiopia agreed to a border Sudan preferred, but the Amara never agreed to the deal. Near the end of 2020, Sudan increased its military on the border, and there were military clashes. Sudan destroyed Ethiopian administrative facilities and army outposts, as well as removed Amara farmers. The border dispute remained militarized in 2021. In these clashes, Sudan took land on the border. Also, many refugees fleeing into Sudan increased tensions. During the war, there were several episodes of violence between Amara and Oromo communities, including mass murders of civilians. Oromo villages in Amara and Amara villages in Oromia have been attacked and people have been slaughtered in intercommunal violence. Violence has also occurred in the Ethiopian region of Somali. Eritrea is training an Amara militia in a region that borders Tigray 
These rebels may be hostile towards Abbey and could be used by Eritrea if there's a split between them. The war has reignited ethnic identity and consciousness, lowering support for a centralized government. This aspect may be a major backfire for Abbey, who wanted centralization. The Ethiopian Tigray War was a human catastrophe. Hundreds of thousands of people died in combat. Just as many or more civilians died. All groups involved have committed atrocities. Tigray was the most devastated as its people were slaughtered and starved, and their property and infrastructure was destroyed. The war significantly weakened Ethiopia's military power. It also damaged the country's international reputation, with Ethiopia claiming it to be an internal manner and refusing mediation while atrocities were being committed. The Tigrayans were better trained and had more reason to fight, but the Ethiopians had much higher numbers and air power. So, the federal government won in the end. The Tigrayans should not have escalated the feud with Abi, should not have allowed it to get to an all-out war where they underestimated their many opponents, and should have had lower barriers to peace talks. Abi came to power promising ethnic harmony. He quickly won accolades as a peacemaker and a freedom bringer. In his failure to find a peaceful solution to his disputes with Tigray, and in his decision to use starvation as a weapon of war, he has proven to be a bringer of death, famine, and destruction. Well, that's a pleasant topic. I'm Lone Candle. Like me, comment me, 